Hey guys, it is Miss Simrino. If you are returning to the channel, welcome back. And if you're brand new, I am very excited that you decided to join me here today for another speed build. And we are in Henford on Bagley. I have not been here in some time, probably since last fall. That might be accurate. And this is my go-to world aside from Brindleton Bay, where I love to build with the season of fall being active. So I have a sim on the lot today. I just felt like the setting, my dear friend Rachel Pett has mentioned this before, but like the setting is so important when I'm doing an autumnal build. Like I want the world around this build to also be fall. I wanted the trees to be yellow and golden and red. It's a lot more gold actually, it seems like in this area in early fall, but I digress. We are building a little autumnal cottage and before anyone possibly says it, because I noticed this the second I finished it, <laughs> is it's very similar to another cottage, which I believe I titled Autumnal Cottage, from maybe two years ago or something. The layout is different, of course. The lot is different. There's a lot of different components to this build, but I would say that trying to build an English cottage like this, like the shape is very simple. So it's not necessarily surprising that I came up with a very similar shape, but I love this little place so much. It ends up being a two bedroom, I'll say two bathroom, but that might be a bit of a stretch because the bathroom downstairs is quite literally just a toilet. It is two tiles and there's a toilet. There's, there isn't even a sink. You have to go to the kitchen. I know, I'm sorry. Couldn't make it work for the life of me, but there is a full bathroom upstairs, which technically would be a three quarter bath because there's only a shower. So maybe all in all, it, it actually adds up to like a one bathroom house. I don't know. It doesn't matter. But um, yeah, it's two beds and we'll say two bathrooms. And there's also a little modern extension off the back, which I really liked. It's very simple. It's literally just a rectangle. But the greenhouse haven kit really came in handy when I did that modern extension. And I really like that because I've seen a lot of reference pictures of kind of older English cottages that have those extensions on them. And they usually are just a rectangle or a square off the back. They might have a flat roof and stuff like that. So that's what I ended up doing. And I went with very autumnal colors, at least in my opinion. We have this door that's almost, almost kind of like a reddish orange. It's kind of a rusted orange, if you will. And then I went with these windows from Cottage Living that have the red, I, I can't call it trim. I guess it's kind of the trim on the interior of the windows. It's not the exact same color as the door because I noticed that the windows that go with that door are I think the ones with shutters and these windows more so go with the other wooden door that we have with the big like handle knocker on the front. I, we have a couple of sets and we all know how sometimes in The Sims sets aren't necessarily given to us complete. So I tried to match the colors as best I could. And I just liked the door popping as this burnt orange. And then the red in the windows really went with all of the autumnal colors that I ended up choosing on the exterior. That's how I also chose a lot of the trees and other landscaping items. So I don't necessarily know what some of those things will look like when it is not fall, but I did size down a tree from the get together debug menu. I believe it's always that color red. So it's always gonna be red. And then there's the little teeny tiny tree, the one that I sized down a lot there from Cottage Living. I know that one will be green, even though it's gold in there. Same with the other one that I lowered into the ground with the tool mod. It's another green tree from the Cottage Living debug menu that I believe is gold here. Yeah, it's gold here. So there's gonna be a lot of green amidst the kind of like sunflower looking, daisy looking flowers that I've got in there too. It's not gonna be super colorful is my point. It's gonna be a lot of greenery and maybe some yellow flowers, but I really loved how it looked in the fall. And as you can see, I used some fencing pieces from the debug menu as well with Cottage Living and I encircled the entire lot. I thought it looked so nice. And I believe your Sims can walk right through these items because they're debug. So it's not like you're actually locked into the lot because I did play test it. I know that those those closed fenced gates that I put there, they're also from the debug menu, but I believe the closed ones actually do hinder your Sims ability to walk into the lot. 
So if it's a little bit wonky, I would just recommend getting rid of those fencing items, like the gate, but the stone fence itself, I don't think should be a problem. But as you can see, we did all of the landscaping here. We pretty much laid out the majority of the lot. Now I will say that off camera, I do add a swing set and a picnic blanket as well with the picnic basket outside um, after we put the finishing touches on like the second story. I just did it off camera because it took like two seconds to do. <laughs> I didn't feel like recording it. I was pretty much done with the build at that point. Um, but it's kind of a longer build just because I did go very detailed with the landscaping in this one, which I feel like I haven't done in a really long time. This also might sound kind of odd, but I feel like I'm just, I, I said this in a build maybe a couple of months ago, but now I've changed my mind a bit. I feel like now I'm just getting out of my burnout. I'm not kidding. I, over the holidays, I'm gonna rattle on about this forever. So over the holidays, um, I had the cursed COVID. My whole my whole like household did. Then there was the flu that went around. It was horrible. And I was going through major burnout after that just because being sick took all of my energy away. I also um, wrote a book. I wrote three books actually in that time period. Only one of them is released at this time. So creatively and then just psychologically, emotionally, everything, I was so burned out. And I hadn't touched The Sims a lot during that time because I was so preoccupied with other creative endeavors as well as just being ill, which was not fun. Um, but I feel like I'm just getting my groove back. Like I've really been enjoying doing Let's Plays and legacy challenges. And it's not something that, it's something I tried to do when I first made my channel, but I never stuck with it. So I'm really trying to stick with some things now. And I'm really just kind of, following my interests too, which unfortunately could mean that I don't stick with some things. That's not me alluding to anything. I'm just, it's kind of a precursor to just in case. But anyway, I haven't been building as much and it's really just because I've I've had no idea where to, where to start. Like I haven't known what to build. I've done like apartment renovations, try to get back into decorating. I've done a couple of builds now and I'm very proud of them and I really, really like them. But this one just felt like I'd gotten over a hump and I don't know why. I think it's because I can I can speculate because autumn is my favorite season. I love this time of year so much. I love fall. And I was really, really excited to start doing fall builds. And every time I thought about doing a fall build, I was like, I don't know what to make. And it was really disheartening. And then I made this and I love it. I love it. I felt like I made some creative decisions that I haven't made for a long time. Like I've shied away from them. I use a lot of objects I haven't used in a long time. And I just felt like I broke a mold that I was stuck in during my burnout. And I feel like I'm finally starting to come out of it. Like I've been in this really weird, not even dark cloud. It's like, it's almost transparent. I can see avenues out, but the second I turn my head, it just fogs over again. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's very odd. It's been a very odd sensation for me. But anyway, we're on the interior, as you can see, now that I've blabbed on about my own garbage for so long. Um, <laughs> we're working on the kitchen and it's a very small kitchen. This is a galley kitchen, which I usually don't like, but I do them a lot in English cottages, I've noticed. And I used the red appliances in here from the country kitchen kit, which I love. I loved this kitchen so much, more than I, thought I was going to considering it was so small and it didn't really have too, too much to offer, but it's really nice. I tried to use some reds, some oranges, some golds, and a lot of like darker wood tones in this build to really capture the colors of fall. And even though it's a more autumnal build, I kept the actual fall decorations to, I would say a minimum. So this isn't a build where you're going to have to make a ton of amendments maybe to make it feel a little less seasonal. It's still going to feel just like a regular old English cottage, but we have like some faux pumpkins and we've got some, um, oh, like some of the fall leaves, like the maple leaf decorations and candles and stuff. And a couple of pumpkins on the countertop in the kitchen, because of course. And also, oh, I forgot to mention the pumpkins that I put outside near the fence, near the, like the little entryway there those will go bad. It's something I learned when I used them in another autumnal build last year. Those are from the debug menu in Cottage Living and they're like the oversized crops. And since they're crops, they will go bad. So um, be weary of that. Is it weary or wary? I can't remember which. That, 
Those are two words I can never get correct. <laughs> you don't have to tell me in the comments. I'm going to look it up right after I finish this voiceover. Um, but yes, be mindful of that. Be aware of that. I also added some of those decorative pillows to the dining chairs, which I thought was kind of a nice touch. And now I'm trying to pick out a wallpaper, which I use one from Base Game with this, I can't even call it really a darker wood tone, but it's got kind of like this very pale gold wallpaper with the darkish wood wainscoting. And I thought it was really pretty. I thought it was nice for a cottage and it kind of, it brought it up to a different level. Like a lot of the wallpapers that we got with Cottage Living, I would say are a little bit more playful and, and kind of youthful and cutesy, but this seemed a little bit more sophisticated, which made me feel like I could play around with a few different styles. Now the living room was difficult for me to sort out. It was, so I pulled everything back and just decorated this little console table that I added near this window. Typically what I would want to do in a window like this, if the layout was a bit different, is I would try to put a console table and then a couch in front of it. I just love, love that look so much. I didn't do that here just because the way I laid out the living room it was challenging, but it ended up working out. I really wanted there to be a fireplace in this build. It just feels right for English cottages to have fireplaces. I do have the little wood burning stove. You can see it there in the corner. I get rid of it in this room. I add it into the little one tile that I closed off in the front entryway. And I add one to the modern extension. Cause I was thinking the modern extension would likely, like realistically, it would be more of kind of a three season porch. If you have the little heater there, you could be out there in the winter and still be cozy. And I thought that was so fun. And these couches, <gasps> I was freaking out about this. You know, I've been trying to use these couches more and more from the Crystal Creations kit. This orange swatch, I love it. And it was just the absolute perfect selection, I think, for this themed build. I thought it was so pretty with the darker brown pillows. It just tied everything in with the darker... Uh, the rug, that's what it's called, with the rug. I've got the little basket with the pillows with the pumpkin on it from Cottage Living. And I was able to squeeze in a fireplace exactly the way I wanted to. And that one is from Cats and Dogs. I just, I think the living room's perfect considering that it's a bit long and I thought it was gonna be harder to try to lay it out. I love how the living room came out. It's probably my favorite room in this build. And it's mainly those couches. I even posted an image of this while it was kind of a work in progress for my members here on the channel. And someone asked if they were CC and I was like, oh my gosh, no, they're not. They're from the Crystal Creations kit. Can you believe that? Like these couches are so pretty. They're so pretty, but there's only love seats. I wish we had a three seater version and a matching armchair desperately. I desperately wish that. Um, also, since I did mention channel membership, I have gotten a lot of questions recently about channel memberships and just the um, early access to videos. So I'm going to put it here in this voiceover instead of making like five community posts, which I've done before. And that's not a dig. It's just I try to put the information out there frequently so no one gets confused. But so channel membership is completely optional. So that's number one. You never, ever have to feel an obligation to become a channel member. All of my content, it will always be public eventually. Always. Always, always, always. Nothing will ever be exclusively members only. That's number one. But number two is I record a lot of my stuff in batches. So channel members are guaranteed at least, at least, and those are the keywords, one day early access to like a build video, cast video, whatever it is, whatever I'm posting. Now, since I record in batches, there could be, I, I think right now at the time of me recording this, I have 10 videos up for early access to members because they're done. It's just how I work, it's my workflow. So when something is done, I make it available to channel members. However, I post on a schedule because I'm not gonna post like 10 videos in a week. That would be really silly and honestly a bit overwhelming for all involved. So I basically just queue up all of my videos. I'm able to schedule them from members to public on YouTube, which was, it was not always a, a functionality and it's amazing. I'm so glad we have that. So you might see videos remain behind that members only tag for up to a month it's happened, I think. And I just wanted to curb any confusion. Those will go public. It's just, I'm on a schedule. So <laughs> I make them go public. I think I post right now like two to three videos a week and I try to alternate with some of my let's plays as to what episodes are coming when. 
So it's a lot. It's just a lot. I'm juggling a lot. And it's the only way for my brain to kind of check something off. Like, yes, that video is done. This episode of this LP is done. This video is scheduled for this day. So now I have content out until like early October, which means that if I want to take like a break, I can go ahead and do that for a week or two. So it's a lot. Um, there's a lot going on in my brain. There might not, it might not be the best system, but I wanted to kind of clear that up for anybody who was interested. Membership, I think is like $2.99 a month right now, US dollars. Again, it's never an obligation. You get early access to stuff, you get some emotes and you get some members only exclusive community posts where I show you behind the scenes stuff of either what I'm working on or that's, that's actually pretty much it. Yeah, um, it's totally optional. You never have to do it. But for those of you who are channel members, I'm so appreciative of you because it's really nice of you. It's like genuinely so nice of you to do that. The fact that you chose me and my content to basically financially contribute to outside of watching videos, I do not take that for granted. Um, I am a channel member of maybe like two or three channels right now. Like I'm very, I'm very exclusive with who I decide to become a channel member with because I want to show that outward support, that extra step of support for creators that I freaking love. If I could, I would just be a channel member for everybody, but I have to be exclusive with it because I can't afford that. <laughs> anyway, my point is I am just really grateful that you all decided to become channel members because that's really cool. I probably don't say it enough, um, so I wanted to say it here as I've talked through the entirety of the entryway and the primary bedroom, which is this room right here. It's a long room. The only thing that drove me up the wall was the fact that the bed was not centered with the windows. Oh my goodness, did it drive me. Oh, it, it got to me. It really, really did. I debated whether or not I was going to be okay with it if I could push the double bed against the wall, which technically you could do even if you had two adult sims in this build because you can assign the sides of the bed, they'll scoot over, but it's kind of a pain, especially if the sim on the inside of the bed has to get up before the other one. It's a pain for gameplay at times. So I decided to make it off center with the window and hope you don't mind. And then we've got the three quarter bath and then this is gonna be the kids room. So I was thinking that it was just a couple and their child, you could turn it into a guest room. You could turn it into an office. You could turn it into whatever you would like. It does not matter. But I went with the kids room. Um, and then that's gonna be pretty much it for the build actually. Like I said, I added a few items off camera to the backyard, which you'll see in the screenshots. And that's it. So I hope you all enjoyed this one. Um, this was really rambly, but I had a lot that I wanted to one, get off my chest, and then two, explain, just to try to curb any confusion, answer any questions. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions about anything I brought up, um, and I'll do my best to answer them. But I hope you'll enjoy this. I cannot wait to hear your thoughts, and I will catch you next time I post a video, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. See